Hello, and welcome to CNET's 2023 election coverage. I'm Jeff Rushton of statecollege.com, and today we're profiling the race for the Fort Ferguson Township Board of Supervisors. And with me now is Democratic uh, Ward 3 candidate, Patty Stevens. Patty, thanks for joining us. Okay. Uh, so, Patty, uh, to start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your background? I am, let's see, I've lived in State College since about 2016 and in Ferguson Township since 2017. Um, I was a military family for 27 years prior to that, so lived all over the United States and even outside of the States, and we've decided to settle here. Um, you're currently serving on the board, um, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be involved with uh, Ferguson Township government? Oh. Well, it, it really started as a way um, of getting to know people when I moved here. Uh, it, and at, the, at that particular time, uh, politics were something that I'd never been involved with before, um, but decided that I needed to and got involved with the Center County Dems and it just sort of evolved from there. Right. Right. Um. So what do you think are the biggest challenges facing Ferguson Township right now? And are any of them unique to Ward 3? Uh, nothing that I feels particularly unique to Ward 3. Um, the, cha the biggest challenge is, as I see it right now, it's not unique to Ferguson either, and that is using so few dollars to m maintain what operationally uh, what we need to do to to serve our residents um, and so I think that's it it's the how do you spread the dollars around to do the most good to that everybody feels it right right um, you know sort of along those lines uh, the township hasn't had a tax a real estate tax increase since 2006 how important is it to you to continue that and you know how do you balance, you know, not having a tax increase with maintaining or, or improving those services that you offer? Well, it's important to me to keep taxes. That's one thing that people, affordability living here is, is a huge issue. And um, because we have the diverse, uh, you know, at the western side of Ferguson is uh, obviously uh, more landowners, et cetera, than the more densely populated. So it's it's really important that we keep our taxes low. Um, to it is it's it's one thing that I have heard. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't remember what you asked in the rest of the question. Just to yeah, show, um, how do we do it? It's, yeah, you know, how do you balance that keeping taxes low with you know maintaining and Im right. even improving services? Thank you. Um, so what we really are relying on is um, our township staff, particular our township manager, has been uh, trying to make Ferguson Township more resilient in terms of um, technology, and that can help. And so in terms of processes, the more we can become technologically up to date, um, maybe it doesn't require as much staff. So. Um, so while we, we do need staffing, um, sometimes a lot of the work that has been done in the past, uh, if we were, particularly in terms of uh, budgeting, et cetera, and the, the software, using updated software and being able to file forms online, things like that are really things that will help us. If we can get those systems up and running and in place, will help us save money. So that's really what we're operationally hoping to do um, and supporting the staff in, in doing that. And hopefully that can help us keep taxes down. Right. Um, in 2021, the township instituted the stormwater management fee. Um, how do you think that's worked out so far? And is there anything you would do differently or, or change about it? Um, at this point, no. I, I think that program is still in, in its infancy um, because we passed it 
Again, I have that weird time warp of COVID on the plate, so I, I can't actually remember when we passed it, but um, we did pass that. So we had the first year of just uh, the collection of the fees, et cetera, and, and they're working on that. You know, we have the stormwater engineer and working on these projects. Um, and so it would be nice to see some more infrastructure changes because of that and and then reevaluate it. So I wouldn't do anything differently. As I said, it's it's in its infancy and I would like to see where it goes. Right. Um, what's your view of the township's relationship with the Center Region Council of Governments and uh, how much value do you find in, in um, the consolidation of services and regional cooperation? Oh, I'm really pleased with that. Um, but like every organization, you know, I think there are challenges and struggles going on, but it is the, cooper the uh, cooperative nature of that that we can provide more services to more people. Um, so I'm pleased with that and happy for it. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. um, the, the township over the past couple of years has made a few changes to its workforce housing ordinance, but are there things that uh, you think can be done to um, improve or, or increase the stock of affordable housing um, in, in the township? Well, if I had that answer, I'd be the most popular <laughs> person in many areas. Um, no, really, I think it is just working with uh, the developers working with the residents to make something that is makes everybody happy um, of course maintaining that regional growth, growth boundary is is critically important um, so I wish I had something more to offer mm -hmm. but I don't um, I know the the township is, uh, you know, the board's looking at uh, some changes to the terrorist uh, streetscape district uh, ordinance, um, including, you know, limiting or reducing building heights. Um, are there any sort of specific things you would like to see to uh, shape development in that West College Avenue corridor, you know, as developers come and start looking out in the in that area? Um, no, it, I. The residents have been pretty clear about what they don't want in terms of of height. In um, so I'm not exactly sure. It would be nice if maybe a, the zoning would allow maybe a couple different. But we have a commercial zone uh, over in where I live, um, and maybe we can look at that. But I, again, we're just trying to listen to the uh, concerns of the residents there and, and doing what's best for them. Uh, and then also thinking about the traffic that goes through there. So it, it really, it's, it's a process and it takes a lot of input from a lot of different people yeah. and just being mindful and, and listening. Right. Um. You know, over on North Atherton Street, there's uh, recently been a proposal for a gas station and convenience store on a property there at the West Aaron Drive corner. And that's raised some concerns from uh, uh, the adjacent neighborhood about traffic. Um, in, in those types of situations, how do you work to address residents' concerns while at the same time recognizing that, you know, you have this commercial area um, and, uh, you know, a business that wants to open there. Right, right. Um, it, it, that's obviously my ward, <laughs> and um, I've just been encouraging residents to be um, vocal, and they have been. They've they've really gotten together and have met uh, individually to address and follow the issue. So they have been coming to our board meetings and speaking uh, at times, at public comment period times, uh, encouraging them to, once a land development plan gets submitted, to follow it through planning. Um, maybe even encouraging folks to go to the county level. Um, I understand their concern. Um, again, it's a situation where 
We know Atherton is a busy street, um, and that will definitely need to be uh, looked at. The traffic flow there, uh, maybe in that particular intersection improvement, but there is no crystal ball to say what will happen. We know that uh, traffic lights on Atherton are designed to keep traffic flowing on Atherton. So um, I appreciate the concern and would just uh, encourage everybody to keep doing what they're already doing, which is showing up, voicing your concerns, and talking to staff through our coffee and conversations program or talking to the board members, which is exactly everything that they're doing. And hopefully, like the Terrace Streetscape District, we can work together to make it something that works for everybody. Yeah. Um, what will be your top priority uh, if, you're, if you're elected to this term? Oh, boy. My top priority. I, I think it's, again, just using money wisely uh, and, again, investing and uh, saving for things that we don't quite yet know what are coming our way, uh, keeping a healthy fund balance there in our, our general fund. Um, again, just, boy, figuring out the best way to do the most with the resources we have without cutting back services. Uh, we have just a little bit of time left, so um, I'll give you this opportunity to share anything else you would like with the voters. Um, it's, I would say that it's important to me that people feel like I am approachable, that they can reach out to me, um, obviously by email, or I'm always out and about. I, I don't drive, so I'm always on the buses. If people see me on the buses, I would like people to stop and talk to me and um, I think it's important they know that I am accessible and I do listen and I do value what they have to say. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Patty. Thank you. We've been talking with Patty Stevens, the Democratic uh, incumbent uh, for uh, Ferguson Township Board of Supervisors representing Ward 3. Um, election day is Tuesday, November 7th, and you can also vote by mail. Uh, for more information, contact the Center County Office of Elections or visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Jeff Rushton of statecollege.com. Thanks for joining us, and please be sure to vote.